Hey, I'm Madison, and one thing about me is I do love to read. I'm always reading a book, um, listening to books, audiobooks. I do read a lot of nonfiction books, um, but I also do occasionally enjoy um, a fun fiction book or novel. Um, but I always enjoy talking about the books that I have been reading with my friends or my family. And so I thought it might be fun to give some book reviews um, on some books that I've been reading. So my most recent book that I've read, I actually just finished tonight. It's a book called Just Thinking About the State. Um, it's actually written by the hosts, the two co-hosts of the Just Thinking podcast, uh, which is Daryl Harrison and Virgil Walker two really, really wise guys. So um, this book, just thinking about the state, it's funny, I actually ordered it, pre-ordered it before it ever came out. <laughs> um, and that was in 2020, whenever it came out, I believe. And never read it. It was sitting on my bookshelf, unfortunately, for a long time. I wish I would have read it earlier. Um, but it was just one of those things where it was sitting on my bookshelf and I never picked it up and I'm glad that I did finally. While I was reading it, I, every single time I was reading it, I had to have, whoops, I had to have a pen in hand, <laughs> a pen, a highlighter, something. I would bring this book with me in my bag every day so that if I ever had to go sit somewhere, you know, I try to read instead of just scrolling on my phone, I will try to bring a book in those situations. Um, this book, I had to also keep a pen in my purse as well um, because I I literally wouldn't read it unless I had a pen to highlight things. Definitely every pastor should read it. And if you're a Christian, you should also read it. Um, I wouldn't suggest it for somebody who doesn't enjoy um, I don't know how to say it, but like very almost textbooky type books. It's definitely um, information packed. If you enjoy very information packed books, then you will enjoy it. If you don't really enjoy kind of like a textbooky feel of a book, then you're probably not going to like it that much. You might get bored. I don't always love those kinds of books, but I did really enjoy this one um, because it's so relatable. So they go through, I'll read you some of the chapters. Some of the chapter titles are government, socialism, capitalism, a social savior, which is basically that chapter was talking about how um, a lot of times people look to social justice as their savior, where they explain in the book that a, a savior cannot be elected. And, you know, obviously there is one true savior and that is Jesus. A lot of people look to social justice as something that will save them, that will save our country, that will save them from being a bad person. Only God can save us and only God can forgive sin. And when it comes down to it, social justice is not biblical justice. And they go through that in, the, in that chapter. They do talk a lot in the book about humanism. Humanism, you know, is all about the self. Christianity is all about God and others and yourself last. Um, so I'll read just a little bit of a quote from the book, something that I have underlined to believe in human autonomy is to live in the same paradigm as scriptures declare in Job 21 14. They say to God, depart from us. We do not even desire the knowledge of your ways. We do not even desire the knowledge of your ways. Those who accept the illusion of human autonomy are essentially telling God, leave us alone. We don't even desire to know your ways, much less obey your ways. 
There is a word for this kind of defiant mindset that Job is talking about. It's called humanism. And I can so see that with our country. What else can I read you? The individual basically becomes his own God. And there is not an inherent contradiction between the idea of living a life of personal fulfillment and aspiring to the greater good. In other words, if the focus of pri is the focus is primarily on the self, how can that possibly lead to a greater good for others? Humanistic people will say that they believe in a greater good, but how could there ever be greater good when all you're doing is focusing on yourself? And another thing, another really big takeaway I took from this book is the Christian worldview. If we're Christians, then our worldview should be a biblical worldview. And if we're Christians, then politics do matter. A lot of people think just keep politics out of the church. You know, politics are over here. Church is over here. And that's not wise. That's not how a Christian should live their life. A Christian should have a biblical worldview for everything in their life. And if politics are a part of our life, which they are for everybody, because like what Ali Bastucki says, one of my favorite girls ever, Ali Bastucki always says that politics matter because policies matter because people matter. So politics affects every single one of us every single day. And so as Christians, we should pay attention to politics. We should pay attention to the policies that are being made. We should look at them with our biblical worldview. They really dive deep. They look at the Bible contextual, contextually. And they go through lots of different topics that we all deal with in America on a daily basis. So, um, five stars. Five stars for just thinking about the state. I think my next book that I'm going to read is this book, Wild and Free Family. I have read her other book, uh, The Call of the Wild and Free, and I loved it. I read it a couple years ago, um, but I loved it. It just shaped my view on homeschool. I, I so want to be a homeschool mom one day. So... I'm really excited for this book. I'll let you know what I think in my next video. Thank you so much for listening. Um, let me know if there's any other books that you want me to um, review and maybe I should review some other books that I've read in the past um, and even some books that I'm listening to. I'm always also listening to an audiobook. So thank you so much, bye.